So I'm Roswell Wolf. I'm the president of Sigfox uh, Asia Pacific region, uh, looking after the region all the way from uh, India to uh, Australia, New Zealand, and uh, uh, China. Uh, and uh, I look after uh, not only uh, the Sigfox team that's based in the region, but uh, supporting our uh, partner companies, our partner operators uh, working in Asia Pacific. Right. Well, uh, Sigfox, uh, you know, we're very focused uh, specifically on uh, providing connectivity solutions, uh, uh, utilizing, uh, taking advantage of the technologies within the Internet of Things uh, space. Uh, specifically, we're, we're deploying a worldwide global network uh, for IoT. We do that through a series of partnerships with uh, regional and local operators, uh, uh, such as here in Singapore. We're working with Unibiz uh, uh, that covers Singapore and Taiwan, uh, Thinkstra Solutions in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, we have uh, Kyocera in Japan uh, and others uh, that are here on our stand with us jointly uh, Malay in Malaysia, Exparanti, and Platanera in Thailand. And we're expanding. Uh, we're in 12 countries now in Asia, 45 countries globally. Uh, we are working towards a, a target of a roughly 60 plus countries by the end of this year that will be uh, in the process of deploying our network. So really providing a truly global network for uh, connected objects. We uh, are focused on uh, providing solutions that are somewhat agnostic to, to industry specifics, but we do have uh, over a thousand projects today that are covering everything from agricultural, uh, industrial, uh, smart, uh, uh, smart city uh, applications, uh, retail, uh, as well as uh, healthcare services and uh, personable, uh, personal consumable products uh, that are using uh, IoT for connected services. The, the focus of uh, Sigfox is really enabling companies to take advantage of capturing the data that's around us. Uh, data from, uh, from uh, our bodies, our own uh, heat and energy consumption, uh, to inanimate objects uh, that, that are uh, able to be monitored remotely and capture information. And the focus is enabling companies to capture the value of that data in the most cost efficient and the most energy efficient uh, manner. By doing this, it allows them to do the analytics and information management uh, that will deliver a real value to their businesses, real value to their citizens uh, for government projects, and uh, value to uh, enterprises uh, in improving their performance and operations. Right. Well, I think what we've seen, uh, if, you, uh, if you saw our stand last year, we were probably uh, uh, half the size. So we had uh, half the number of uh, uh, co-partners uh, co uh, working in the market and probably just a very few devices that could be connected. Uh, using the Sigfox uh, technology. Now we have over 80 products and solutions in just one year uh, that are Sigfox ready. Uh, we've doubled the number of countries that we're covering in, uh, uh, in around the world and in Asia in particular. So by that I mean to say that the pace of change uh, within uh, IoT has moved dramatically. Uh, certainly there are many reports that talk about the billions of connection objects that are going to be uh, in the market by 2020, which is a, a, a fixed target that people have been looking at. And while those uh, reports will vary in terms of volume, there's no question that the number is going to be huge. And uh, that number really has been questioned over the last couple of years because the pace of growth has been somewhat moderate. But what we're seeing now is a, a hockey stick approach where we see a very rapid acceleration because the technologies are improving, the acceptance of those technologies and how they can be used is improving, and the cost of, uh, uh, of those uh, solutions is dropping quite dramatically. So Sigfox, for instance, uh, we started out just two years ago with uh, a $14 module to connect a device to our network. Uh, to late, today that's below $2, and we're working on technologies that will make uh, that, uh, that chipset available at less than 20 cents. That really means that you can connect almost anything with that kind of price point. So we, we see that accelerating, making these solutions more and more readily available. And once that data is available at a low cost, uh, it means that the applicability uh, and use cases will increase quite dramatically. I mean, I don't think that there's any one nation or any one country that has a, uh, has a lock on the future of uh, technology. Uh, certainly, yes, uh, Sigfox itself is a, is a French headquartered company, uh, but you'll have heard today that 
uh, this year, uh, 2018, is uh, the year of uh, uh, France-Singapore cooperation. Uh, and we are doing a lot to uh, create incubators, uh, work with the uh, universities uh, such as Nyang Technical University, uh, providing them technology and uh, access to uh, information as well as trainings uh, to enable the next generation of students to learn the technology and, and deliver value to uh, Singapore and uh, Asia Pacific region. So uh, really making technology work for us uh, to help humankind is about making it accessible. So I think uh, you'll start. To, we're starting to see trends where new and innovative ideas are not uh, owned by any one geography. They're really coming from uh, many different places around the world. Uh, well, Europe may have been a catalyst originally, and certainly it's where we we began. Uh, we see uh, that growth uh, coming from Asia Pacific and. After all, Asia is a region that is an engine for the manufacture of devices and smart devices, so it's natural to see that uh, the development of uh, platforms and solutions and applications is, is equally going to be contributed to here to, to solve global, global problems. The next big thing for IoT. Well, I think what's always been a challenge for, uh, for IoT is uh, the fact that today we see that companies are able to capture data from uh, devices, but they don't really know how they're going to derive the value from that information. Uh, in the last year or so, we're starting to see uh, much more advances in terms of the analytics engines, uh, the, the efficiency of storing and managing that data, and, uh, and utilizing it to generate information that's useful to businesses. So I think that uh, the, uh, the analytics engines, which, will, which are starting to utilize uh, artificial intelligence or AI types of applications, uh, both from the, the device level, where you have uh, smart sensors or edge-based computing technology that, that can enable things like like uh, autonomous vehicles to, to react to proximity alerts uh, at source, as well as back-end engines which are using AI to do more predictive analysis that says not only can we see what has happened already, but we can start to use that information to uh, prevent things from happening in the future based upon those behaviors. Uh, a practical application, for instance, is we're working with a partner called Senior Atom, uh, which is a French startup company now deploying in Asia. We've, we've started a pilot project in China uh, with the city of Chengdu, the technical development authority there, uh, to deploy a senior citizen uh, AI-based fall detection solution. And it's not any longer just about determining whether the uh, the elderly citizen falls and sending somebody to help them. It's about following their daily patterns of their lives. And when you start to see changes in that pattern, uh, you can determine whether, well, maybe they're suffering from some kind of illness. We need to uh, give them an examination and see if we can prevent them from falling in the first place. So we st we'll see those kinds of advances where we can be more proactively useful in managing a product, uh, helping our citizens, uh, developing uh, preventative uh, capabilities for for uh, products or people or, uh, uh, or services. So I think that that will start to accelerate and we'll see uh, more practical applications of that as we go forward in the future. Yes, I think uh, uh, today uh, businesses, some of the biggest challenges that they face when, when they first answer the very first question is, well, is there some value in deriving data from my products or services or operations? Once they've determined that, it's how can I best capture that data in a way that's cost efficient, uh, 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 energy efficient, uh, to be able to derive that value in a profitable way. Then they face a myriad of questions. What technology do I use? What products do I use? What sensors? What platforms? What connectivity solution do I use? An event like IoT Asia allows companies to start to educate themselves as to the many options that are available to them and to talk to solution providers about determining what might be the best combination of those products and services and uh, connectivity solutions that will fit their business model. Uh, you know, when IoT Asia started out a few years ago, it was a, a fairly small group. Uh, I think the, the benefit is that we now to see, see a, a lot more information about what's possible. Uh, real use applications, it's no, longer, it's no longer an idea. There are real projects and real applications that are being done. And it gives uh, enterprises an opportunity, as well as government officials, to come and see what's possible, what's really happening today, to educate them in making those choices in a more, uh, uh, in a more educated way. So as they say, knowledge breeds confidence. And once you know more about something, you can make more practical decisions. 
Absolutely. This has become a signature event for us for Southeast Asia. Uh, 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 you know, originally it was about attracting partners to help us to deploy the network. Uh, now it's about uh, demonstrating real use cases for enterprises to start connecting to our network. Uh, obviously, we, we always are looking to de develop the ecosystem of partners, and this is a good forum uh, to convey that message. Uh, we see, you know, many different companies here. We don't we don't think of them as competitors. We think of them as collaborators in a marketplace, giving choices to customers, uh, because we do we are uh, complementary to many of the other technologies out there. Uh, so for us, it's a we've got a central position in the show, and we see uh, the booth has been very busy and showcasing our product. So uh, it's been a very successful for event uh, uh, last year. And but well, we're not done yet. We've got another day to go. But I uh, so far I'm quite confident that we're going to see uh, good results from uh, our participation this year.